it's 1101. I like to start on time. So welcome everyone uh, to our baby. Oh, we have 21. Yay, 22. Okay. <laughs> so today you're going to meet um, an amazing panel of residents at Bayview and they all have their own stories and they all have their favorite things to talk about. Um, a couple of logistics. You will have an opportunity um, to do questions and answers. And down on the very bottom of your screen, if you um, put your mouse there, you'll see Q&A. And um, we have all these talented, wonderful, informed residents that will love to share their experience with you. All right, and somebody said hello. hello. Yay, all right. So today you're gonna meet seven of our residents. Um, we have David and Maggie, we have Susan, and we have Sue and Chuck, we have Dottie and we have Jenny. So um, each one of them is gonna answer um, some questions and we're gonna start with Maggie and David and they're gonna um, answer four questions that they've already been um, They've they've reviewed it and they know what they're going to say, right? <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> so take it away, David and Maggie. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Bayview. Um, David and I have lived here about two years, and we live in a one bedroom, one bath apartment on the south side. We love it here, and one of the main reasons we moved here was the location. We've lived on Queen Anne for almost 30 years, so this was really easy for us, an easy move. Yeah, I think the other the other reason that I would add for moving here was this phenomenal community that we have here. Um, we'll talk more about that later, but that's uh, just from the first day I walked in here, I just knew this was the place I wanted to live. All right, thank you. Susan. Hi, I'm Susan. And I've been living here at Bayview for almost one and a half years. And I have a one bedroom apartment that faces south over a beautiful view. And the thing that I noticed immediately when walking into Bayview was the light that, fit, that is everywhere. It's such a light and airy place. And the, it is a welcoming community. I felt welcomed literally from the first day I moved in. All right, Sue? Hi, I'm Sue. Uh, in two weeks, Chuck and I will be celebrating one year of living here at Yay. Bayview. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. It went so fast. Uh, what I like most about living at Bayview is, of course, the community, but I, ex I chose to uh, focus on the staff because it feels like family to me. The staff are so cheerful, they are uh, efficient, they are friendly, and they're also very professional. And I'm talking about housekeeping that I really enjoy. Uh, the kitchen staff that accommodates my need for a plant-based diet and um, creatively responds to my suggestions for um, for things that I need. Uh, the reception desk that receives the packages and lets us know right away and takes care of our needs through work orders. Mm -hmm. I just think it's wonderful how all these people have learned our names, have know our preferences and respond to everything that we need. But I'm especially impressed with how they have responded to the pandemic to keep us safe, very professionally yet very gently, uh, without a lot of uh, hassle. I'm really thankful for all of that. Now, my husband and I have two apartments. So I'll tell you the reason for this. Uh, we wanted a south facing two bedroom apartment. We needed it because we needed a den because we take care of our grandkids or we did take care of our grandkids two days a week, they're two toddlers. So we, since that wasn't available, we took what was available, an alcove on the south side, which is our bed and breakfast. Chuck will tell you about that. And I am sitting in our living space, which is a one bedroom apartment that is on the north and west corner. And we just love our apartments. Um, they are big, beautiful. I know 
one thing that scared me about moving into Bayview was when I looked at the square footage, it was really, I thought, I don't know whether I can do this, but don't let that bother you. I, the square footage is not an issue. The apartments are so well done and, and we downsized to fit in and everything is just wonderful here. And it's so much simpler. I'm really glad I don't have the space. Uh, <laughs> Pre-COVID-19, we only had two months pre-COVID-19, but what I do remember is the welcoming community, people who wanted to get to know us, people who were active. And um, now that we are in COVID, when I meet new people, and I met a couple that the other day just came um, in, <coughs> in October, and I just try to project the same welcome to them, because that's really important for new people. So, and I remember the laughter in the dining room. I want to hear that again <laughs> soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sue. And I love your Christmas tree in the background. Yeah, oh. thanks. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm Chuck Jekylls. And as Sue said, we've been here about a year this month, in fact. Uh, our move here was, was also easy to accept because we knew the neighborhood so well. We used to live about six blocks away. And so as we started looking for a retirement community, one of the first places we looked was the one we could see from our front door. And we found out we really liked it. But, but we already knew the neighborhood. So we had no anxiety about you know, the type of neighborhood and how easy it was to get around and so forth. I'm sitting in the other half of what I call our disjoint two-bedroom two apartment. This is the alcove unit. And alcove is kind of a large studio apartment. And I'm sitting at the counter where we eat breakfast each day. Behind me uh, is our bed, which you can't see at all in the, in the camera. And then our, our deck window, which you can see, but I've had to close it. So much light was coming in that, uh, that the camera on this computer was blacking me out instead. <laughs> but when we look out there, we see, so when we wake up in the morning, we look out that view and we see the inner harbor and the Space Needle and the downtown buildings. And it's just a really, and, and Mount Rainier this morning. It's really a, a lovely place to be. All right. Dottie. Yes. Uh, I moved to Bayview eight years ago. Uh, before I moved in, I was a little concerned about downsizing. I knew I wanted to downsize my physical space, but I wasn't ready to downsize my life. And I found that at Bayview, that hasn't been an issue. I have a group of friends I like to get together with. There's eight of us, sometimes there's 12. Well, I live in a studio, but all I have to do is call Lori and the concierge and tell her that I wanna have a party up on the 10th floor. So I can invite my friends there and we usually do a potluck. Well, there's a barbecue up there. So I get to do what I really enjoy. <laughs> I get to grill on the barbecue and share food with my friends. I've had some big parties here. I hosted a, a retirement party for a friend. We had, we had it on the 10th floor. We had about 100 people. My friends just love to come here. They call the, they call the 10th floor Dottie's Penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing with, uh, since we just had Thanksgiving, though we celebrated it in our apartments, if you're the one who hosts the holiday meals, you can do that here. Uh, when the holidays come along, you can let Chef Armin cook the food for you. They add extra tables in the lobby so that we can invite family. And it's really a, a great experience. The other thing is if you have company come in from out of town, you can reserve a guest room here. So all of the things I enjoyed doing before I moved here, I can still do them and do them with style. Yes. So I couldn't be happier. <laughs> Thank you, Dottie. Jenny. Well, on top of everything else everybody is saying, um, I think one primary reason we moved here was my husband has a deteriorating disease. And so we found the security of being at Bayview, knowing that if anything happened with either one of us, we would have the support of the community and um, you know, just a, a sense of safety if anything went wrong. Uh, we have security pulls in our our rooms, and there's a lot of emergency help available. Uh, we moved from Edmonds from a four bedroom house to um, a apartment with just one bedroom, which was rather intimidating. But I find the fact that we have <laughs> our own things 
makes a huge difference. It, I mean, it's like part of your life is still coming along and it makes your uh, initially sterile apartment seem, seem like it's home. And that has been important to us. And we also have a south facing apartment. Um, just a few minutes ago, a huge cargo ship went by coming into port, I presume bringing more Chinese uh, Christmas decorations. Uh, but <laughs> boats is fun. And my husband has a Navy background and that just is an important part of life here for us. Awesome. All right. Well, now each one of them are going to talk about um, something that is near and dear to their heart. So we're going to start with Maggie. Go for it, Maggie. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons we moved here was the location. And Bayview has so much going for it. There's an easy walk to Met Market, wine, Bartels, drugs. There's all kinds of festivals at the... Um, at the Seattle Center, and um, there's the new Pledge something arena, which I think most of us will continue to call the Key Arena. There's there's sports there and concerts, uh, the hockey team, and of course the four-time WNBA uh, mm. champions, the Seattle Storm, go Storm. And then a little, a few blocks um, far further away. There's the, the McCaw Hall, which has the opera, the ballet, and all kinds of musical performances, including the men's chorus, which is amazing. And then about two miles from here, you can either walk or take a bus downtown. And on your, if you're walking on your way, you can run across the Sculpture Park, which is just an amazing park here in Seattle. The bus is a dollar with a senior pass, which you can get at QV, QFC, which isn't very far away. We also have the Seattle Symphony and the bus stops right in front of the Seattle Symphony. The Paramount Theater, which is a few blocks away from that, Fifth Avenue, and many, many restaurants. And um, we have the relatively new uh, Ferris wheel, and which is really fun once. And um, there's the aquarium and the ferry terminal, and of course, Pike Street Market. It just makes it, you can get to these places mm. very quickly and very easily. So. Um, move to Bayview. Yay. Thank you, Maggie. All right, David, you're going to talk. Yeah, on a, on a totally different uh, topic, obviously. Um, one of the things that we really like about Bayview is that it's, it's really a democratic institution. By that, what I mean is that each floor is kind of its own little uh, world, if you will, here at Bayview. And we have uh, floor meetings, usually on a regular basis. We haven't been able to do them because there's too many of us, obviously, um, during the COVID. Um, but the floor, they usually have monthly meetings. All the, everybody who lives on the floor, um, they, we hold the meetings at the same time of the month. So every, every floor meets, what is it, something like uh, 4 o'clock on Thursday, the last Thursday of the month or something like that. Um, and each, but each meeting is held by that particular floor. And so they have their own agenda. They have a floor chair who runs the meetings. And uh, then what they, they talk about issues that are particular to that floor. Is, you know, is there a problem with the washing machines on that floor? Or is there a problem with somebody not respecting the recycling, you know, uh, guidelines? Um, <clears throat> or is there something that's, you know, more, um, falls into the area of uh, support from the maintenance crew. There's a problem with some you know, piece of equipment or something that affects everybody on the floor. Um, then those issues, the ones that need to go affect more than just that one floor um, are taken to the resident council. So all the floor chair people are members of the resident council and that meets once a month. And it reviews issues from each of the floors, besides if they're building wide or they just the lower floors or floors on the west side or whatever. Um, and in again, non COVID times, all residents are welcome to go to those meetings. Um, and we have a, a space here that accommodates that many people, but um, we don't get to vote at that council. We, we, the chairperson votes for us. Uh, and acts and whatever issues they're they're coming up with, but it's also a time when the CEO comes and sometimes other members of the executive team come and do 
representations on issues that are current for all of us. So you get to hear it firsthand from uh, the people who are, are working on those issues. Um, we also at those meetings welcome new residents, which is great because you know if you're uh, on a, like us, we're more on a lower floor. We don't get up to the well, except for Dottie, we don't get up to the tenth <laughs> floor all that much. Um, so you know, running into people uh, is kind of haphazard. So it's nice to be able to actually you know be introduced, if you will, in a, in a group setting and know who's new, who's not, and uh, who they are, maybe a little bit about them. So uh, that's pretty much it for the, um, the councils. And that was the one thing that I wanted to talk about. Thank you, David. All right, we're gonna go to Susan. Well, I am delighted to be able to talk about one of my favorite topics and that's art. Um, Bayview has a beautiful, large art studio with one wow. whole wall is glass. And there have been many art classes at Bayview. They've included media such as acrylic, watercolor, and drawing. As a watercolor painter, we had a wonderful time playing with paint and water and the various ways to put these on paper. And the myth that watercolor is just too hard was put to rest. We had an incredible drawing class until the virus closed us down. Art is a broad topic, and so it is at Bayview. Art can include opportunity for writing, playing instruments, and enjoying various performances, including drama. We had a one woman show where she played several famous women, and it was a performance I will never forget. If someone has an idea or request for an art project or class, our activity director will give it consideration. So Bayview is truly rich with art of all kinds, and I urge you to come and experience all that it has to offer. Thank you, Susan. All right, we're gonna go to Chuck. Well, you, you've heard about all the different, or some of the different ways we communicate with each other, with new residents and so forth. And you might be wondering, well, under the current environment where meetings are hard to hold or shouldn't be held at all and so forth, how are we communicating? So I decided to talk to you about some of the ways we do communicate within the building. And there are really several of them and they're quite effective. One is something called the Bayview Weekly, which comes out every week as the name suggests. It also comes out electronically as well as the printed one I have here. This is published by the, by the management, by the administration, but it has a lot of resident input to it. And so, I'll just go through a list of things that they're, they're pretty much nuts and bolts items, but just to give you a sense for how we keep informed about these. In this particular issue, we have a reminder that donations for the staff holiday gifts are due. This is a fund that's collected every year by the resident council to, um, to provide presents at Christmas time to all of our wonderful staff. And it's really quite a successful fund and it's underway right now. Um, there's a reminder that our van services are available. We have a van which will take you to medical appointments so you don't have to walk or, or run or ride the bus or drive or whatever. The van will drop you off at the door. And this reminder just tells us that outside of its normal hours, the receptionist will call lift for you. You don't, you don't even have to do that yourself. Uh, there's a reminder about our wellness program. We have a gym and a pool that operate normally. And... Uh, the, the person who administers those these days isn't administering them because we can't go to the gym or the pool. But what she does instead is to provide us with a menu of online activities. And she reminds us here of some of the exercise classes and so forth that she's providing on our in-house TV channel uh, for us to, to listen to and to participate in. Uh, we have a spiritual care reminder. And again, normally there are lots of in-person group meetings involved with, with the chaplain and with our, our spiritual exercises and so forth. Uh, these days we can't have those. So she provides a weekly Vesper service on YouTube that we can look at. She puts that over channel 69 as well, our in-house television channel. Uh, she reminds us that she's taking up a collection to purchase poinsettias for the holidays and that those will be purchased in honor of, of someone we wish to remember at this time. Uh, we have a reminder that the bookmobile comes every third Thursday. You get a book, uh, a bag of books and so forth that you've reserved through the website at the Seattle Public Library. And uh, 
you turn in the ones you're returning the same way. Uh, and then we have some jokes, which probably aren't worth repeating, but they're there anyway. <laughs> now, in addition to that, we have something that comes out monthly called the Bayviews. And this is a chance for, this is published by the residents, but staff participate in contributing things. And these days when there are no big meetings for introductions and so forth, this is providing a mechanism for people like the CEO to, to give us a, a letter t telling about infrastructure improvements, um, improvements to the cable, to the Wi-Fi bandwidth, which you might notice is needs improvement, uh, but that's happening. And this is when she can tell us about those things. Uh, we have an, a letter from the health services director uh, reminding us about the situation with regard to holiday visits and so forth and cautioning us against them, but reminding us what the situation is and what the best practices are for so we'll be safe this holiday season. We have a letter from our resident services director, Heather Smith. It's a Thanksgiving message, just thanking us and thanking the staff and reminding everybody about what, what a, a wonderful place this is to be and how grateful we, we are for it. We have an, a letter from the archive committee, which is something the residents run, uh, reminding us of some of our legacy. They look through the historical documents for the Bayview Manor and tell us about its founding and how it relates to what we're doing now and so forth. And, th and in this, we have five pages of poems, stories, and humor. And again, I won't repeat them, but they're, they're more involved. And, and some of them are excerpts from other writers, but some of them are generated here by, by people in the community. Um, then we also get some other things. We get COVID-19 bulletins when they're necessary. Those are quite important. And they come out if, if something is changing. For example, if, if, if we would be allowed to have gym activities in the next near future, we'd receive a notice of that. Uh, we have a YouTube site which collects um, downloads from videos and services in the church, in the chapel and so forth. We have postings by our elevators. And this week on our floor, we're having a, a Zoom reception for new residents this Friday in place yeah. of the kind of reception that David mentioned. So that gives you an idea. We, we keep well informed and even without meetings and so forth, we're doing a pretty good job of that. Awesome. Thank you, Chuck. It looks like Susan is behind you. She has appeared behind me. Yes. I suspect there's a technical issue. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Susan, if you could have a seat and. There we go. All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I lost my internet connection, and my IT guy was down in the other apartment. So, <laughs> I wanted to tell you about the Bayview Gardens and the Garden Committee, because that's really my life here at Bayview. Now, Bayview has public gardens, which surround our buildings and are visible from the street. We also have private gardens that are um, outside of Bayview, but not accessible or visible from the street. Um, the, the terrace, we call it the terrace gardens. The terrace gardens have large green grassy spaces surrounded by a walking path of about a tenth of a mile. And then outside of that are beautiful border gardens that have flowering trees and bushes, our beloved rose gardens, uh, and many flowers. And um, then inside of that is a round space called the patio that has uh, about 10 tables with chairs and, and uh, umbrellas. And we put up a sail so that it's easy to sit out there in the sun and be shaded. It's a wonderful place to be in the summer or in the winter for that matter. Uh, then uh, on the patio, we have the greenhouse. The greenhouse is a large, fully functional uh, greenhouse, glass enclosed, about 15 feet by 20 feet. And that is the place where I find my love here at <laughs> Bayview. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Right now it's decked out for Christmas with a large Christmas tree inside. It has mm. icicle lights around the planters and over the ivy arch. And it also has a lit up wreath on the door. So everybody's getting into the holiday spirit through the gardens and the greenhouse. 
um, I wanted to tell you also about the balcony gardens, which are really a part of the gardens here at Bayview. When I look out over our balcony, I can look down and see gardens, and they are fantastical gardens. And we also, there's a picture of a hummingbird on the website. That's not just for fun. We have dozens of hummingbirds here mm -hmm. and dozens of feeders, and it's really an active place, uh, both from hummingbirds, other birds, and other wildlife. Um, the, uh, we have 25, well, we have a very active garden committee, especially in the time of COVID. We have over 25 resident gardeners who have adopted pea patches, pots, planters, and spaces in the greenhouse. There's a lot of active gardening going on here at Bayview. We also have a professional gardening team uh, that comes every week to take care of the gardens, mow the lawn, and in general contribute to the beauty of Bayview in every way. The, the gardeners also have helped us out in the time of COVID uh, when, when we were not able to go out and buy plants for our spots, they brought us in beautiful plant starts, all kinds of flowers, which the residents took and put in their pots and pea patches and planters. And we ended up with a most incredible beautiful garden here at Bayview. And the proof of that is that so many people from the building came out every day to walk in the gardens and enjoy the gardens, including people from assisted living. And uh, also I should mention, we have another garden down below on the bistro leave level that is a private garden specific for people in skilled nursing. That garden's very beautiful too. Mm -hmm. So the garden committee worked very hard. The result was the most beautiful garden. Um, when you get here, I'm talking to the people attending this uh, webinar. When you get here or even before you get here, I want to tell you, you don't need to leave your beloved plants behind. I brought my mother's garlic, my mother's oregano, and several other plants. We'll find places for your plants to thrive here at garden, here in the garden so that you can join them, <laughs> enjoy them. And you can join the garden committee too. So if you have questions, call the reception desk, tell them to let you speak to Sue from the garden committee, and I'll answer your questions with joy. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. All right, moving over to Dottie. Hi, uh, I moved to Bayview eight years ago, and in the time that I've lived here, I've seen some change in the community. We've gotten younger, and we've gotten more diverse. Bayview's roots is it, with the Methodist Church, but now the community represents many faiths, and for some, no faith at all. We have a chaplain who's available to everyone, regardless of your belief, and she's supportive and respectful. She leads an ecumenical Vespers um, service on Sundays, and we have a Catholic priest who comes as well to give communion to those who are unable to get to Mass. Since I've been here, there have been two weddings, and of course we've had memorial services. And Juliana, our uh, chaplain, is happy to assist you know, with any uh, event that you might want to have that has a spiritual aspect to it. This time of year, Christmas trees pop up all over. Um, <laughs> but it's also a time of year when some of our residents light the candles of the menorah. We've had people, we have people who live here who've lived in many parts of the world, in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, and in the Caribbean. We're retired clergy, we're retired military, we're doctors and nurses and social workers. We're bankers, we're lawyers, we're architects. We're people who have started fast food chains and we're people who've been involved in slow food. We have people who've been in theater and design. Mm -hmm. We're retired teachers who've taught music and art, history and literature and the sciences. We're white and brown and Asian American. We're gay and straight with Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. So we'll let it, you'll find a welcome here at Bayview. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dottie. All right, last but not least, Jenny. Oh, I have the big topic of talking about food. Yay. <laughs> I decided, 
I needed to use the word variety to talk about, about this. And variety applies to the different dining venues. It applies to the food itself. And it applies to the company that we uh, connect with. As far as the dining venues go, our main dining room on the first floor is a big spacious place with tables that um, are of different sizes. So you can have two people, you can have eight people. There are people, generally they have um, table linen and cloth napkins and uh, silverware and all those nice things that make it seem like a really uh, top quality dining room. Uh, this, this, uh, in that, that venue, the staff serves the meals off, and there's a lot of variety on the menus. And they also have special occasions where uh, once a month there's a birthday dinner for the people who have a particular connection to that month. And uh, there are special efforts made for holiday dinners too. Uh, second variety thing is the food itself. Uh, the only thing I can think of that's an absolute constant, constant factor is salmon on Sundays. Uh, other than that, there's a great deal of variety. There's a lot of experimentation. Most of it's successful. And the, um, the man who's the head of the dining service is very responsive to any kind of comments you might want to make uh, about things. I've had good responses from him when I've said something. Um, there's a lot of fresh fruit. There's a lot of salads. And as I said, there's variety for each meal including the time in COVID where we're getting menus on our door and can uh, make choices in advance. Uh, so that it seems less institutional than it might otherwise. <laughs> um, as far as the variety of people, uh, there's no assigned seating, which is different than some places. So when you go down to the dining room, you sometimes would make a plan to you know, meet up with friends for a particular meal. But more often for us, at least, we'd go down with totally unplanned thing and take kind of potluck. And that gave us a chance to get to know new people as we came in as uh, outsiders, not knowing people in advance. And extremely interesting people here. And lots and lots of backgrounds, which other people have mentioned as well. Um, and we're missing that at the moment because we're not getting that kind of contact, although we still connect with people in our passageways. Um, and I'd say another factor of the variety of people is the staff, which again has been mentioned by other people, but I think as opposed to when we first came in and, and thought of the people serving us as kind of the waiters in the restaurant, at this point we've gotten to know them and they know us and they know our names very quickly. And we miss having that connection with them, which brings us back to the whole place we started uh, in talking this whole panel is, is the sense of community. I think we all feel not only with each other, but with the, uh, the whole staff. So, all right. Oh, and the one thing I didn't mention uh, in terms of dining venues is you can also use your own apartment. I'm kind of backtracking here, but um, we have a small apartment. We have a microwave and we have a toaster oven kind of thing, uh, but there's just not much point in in doing that, but there are people that just really miss baking, for instance, and we'll have people arrive at our door with cookies just because they've enjoyed keeping that skull going. <laughs> I think that concludes what I have to say about food at the moment. All right. Well, thank you. And if you all will hang tight there for a minute, I'm um, going to talk a little bit myself. And um, I am Lee Miller. I'm the marketing director. And I am celebrating my fifth year this month with Bayview. And um, this was a dream come true for me because I was in another community and I got a phone call one day and um, was asked if I would come and interview. And, uh, and voila, I got very fortunate to be here. So I'm going to talk about Bayview. Um, in 1958 is when um, Bayview was built. It is run by a volunteer board of directors and there are residents on that board. Um, a couple things that are unique that the residents have said is we are proudly independent. We have no other location, but here at the foothills of Queen Anne and we have that beautiful terrace area that Sue talked about in her gardening presentation and um, 
11 times around and it's a mile and it's a nice level safe nobody from the outside can get in there and bother any of our residents so we're very privileged to have that space and also we are pet friendly and we have a leash free dog park that's used by a lot of the um the residents we are what you call a life plan community some of you might recall being called a ccrc community community care retirement center and that means you're going to basically be able to age in place you come in and independent and then as people transition we have um, assisted living and we have memory care and we also have skilled nursing um, in independent living right now we have 29 studio apartments 14 alcoves uh, 72 one bedrooms and 14 two bedrooms. In assisted living, we have uh, 29 studios, two alcoves and five one bedrooms. And in memory care, we have 10. We have a brand new memory care. We're very excited when we did the remodel about three years ago, we um, built a new spot, a spot actually on the nor Northeast corner and um, the memory care unit is lovely, brand new. And then skilled nursing, we have 21 shared rooms downstairs and we have four private rooms. We do have four different views and I can honestly say there really isn't, um, you heard from the residents um, about the different views, but truly there is a lovely view looking south. You have the city and the sound. Looking west, you have the sunsets and my favorite mountain range, the Olympics. Looking north, you have lovely Queen Anne. It kind of gives you that San Francisco flair looking up the hill and, and the park up there. And then east, we have the Cascades. And every once in a while, you'll catch a seaplane coming in for a landing. Don't forget Mount Rainier. And Mount Rainier, yes, I love Mount Rainier. Um, we have another aspect of Bayview that is so wonderful. It's a foundation. It's run by a volunteer board and um, the foundation funds are uh, managed by uh, BNY Melton, one of the world's largest investment managers. And the reason this foundation was put in place because usually if somebody's gonna run out of money, no fault of their own, we are living longer. And um, we have felt very good. We've never asked somebody to leave um, should they run out of money. So our foundation supports that. And our biggest contributors, the residents themselves. And we do an event in the, usually in the beginning of fall called the Savoy. This year we did it virtually, and I believe didn't we hit our goal um, doing it virtually or came really close to it. So usually it's just a gala affair. The food is amazing. People dress up, and we call it friend raising because truly you will meet a lot of friends at that event. Another key area in our building is our Thrive Fitness Center. Currently, um, it's challenged, but soon to return. Downstairs, we have a 56-foot saltwater pool, which is lovely. It's nice and warm. You don't have to shiver when you get in. And that salt water is so healthy for your skin. They have all kinds of classes down there, meditation, yoga, and boxing. I think Dolly, or Dottie, you did some boxing down there. I think I saw some pictures of you boxing away. So you can take your aggressions out on somebody. You got to get them downstairs, get some gloves on them, and, and uh, punch out. Um, we have aqua water, water aerobics, which are great. Um, the deepest part of the pool, I believe, is around four feet. So um, my favorite thing in that pool is the ballet bar. Um, so you can hold on to that and move around and get a great little um, exercise. I mentioned earlier the leash free dog park. Um, very fun to take the little critters out there. And some people, when they move to Bayview, they might not have a pet, but then they decide they will. Um, get one so you can get a pet um, anytime you just have to go through the necessary steps the pet packet and um, get your pet ready to go 
Another wonderful, wonderful thing at Bayview is we have an intergenerational program, meaning we have children here. Um, this school is wonderful. A lot of the residents choose to get involved. And those children range from three months old to five years old. And we've had um, some of our uh, staff have had their children there in the program and it's been really fun. I remember one in particular, um, she was brought in when she was three months old and and now she's almost five. So it's really fun. My favorite day of the year at Bayview is Halloween because these little kids get dressed up in their little costumes. They didn't do it this year, so they're going to have to really perform for us next year, make up for the lost time. But they um, visit the residents and wear their little Halloween costumes, and it's priceless. We have three dining choices. Um, as um, Sue was, or Jenny was talking about, the 10th floor, my favorite meal, and I think if I asked everybody to raise their hand if this is their favorite one up there, but we have creme brulee Belgian waffles and <laughs> yummy, they're so delicious. And um, so we're looking forward to bringing that back. You can have mimosas up there, uh, quiche, um, crepes, really delicious. And then we also have the bistro down on the plaza level, which is right across from the fitness center. And that is more like a lunch and go snack and go um, situation. You can get lattes down there. You can get brownies. You can get lemon tarts. Um, our frozen yogurt is so yummy. Um, my favorite is coconut. And there's a Marion berry, I believe. But you can get soup and sandwiches and every restaurant in this building, we have three, all have different menus. So if you don't like the soup on the main floor, try going down to the um, Pickles Bistro and seeing what they have down there. We also have a library. As a marketing director, a lot of people ask me when they're preparing to move in, Lee, can I bring my books? Honestly, we would have to move all the residents out if I said yes to every person that asked if they could bring their books. So um, we do have a library. It's run by the residents. And I got to tell you, they got the, the tough residents running that because they have to put their foot down and say, no, 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 not to the books. We can't have this many books. They, keep, they take a lot of pride in keeping fresh, new, um, good uh, New York bestsellers in that library. Um, we have the studio. Susan mentioned that for painting. And it is a beautiful view from there because the whole back wall is glass looking out into those fabulous gardens. And honestly, Susan is right. If you come and see the little wall where these watercolors, it looks like we have just famous artists living here. Um, I don't know if it's Susan's been a teacher for that um, and really got everybody skilled to it, but the watercolor pictures are just amazing. Um, we do have the Albertsons room, it's our chapel, and um, that opens up to the Kinnear room, which is our theater. And um, so when you know people say, if you're gonna get all those residents, we have approximately 200, how do you get them all there? It's, um, you slide those doors open and there's room for everybody. Um, I'm a master gardener, I love gardening. And um, I remember talking to the CEO about um, having the greenhouse here. And I was so excited because I have a passion for gardening as well. And you you heard what Sue said about all the people involved in the, the garden committee. That's a lot of people, but there's room for everybody. Um, and then the other thing, I think, I don't remember who mentioned it, but we have the complimentary resident um, rooms available. So if you want to have a party for a family member or um, other residents, um, there's many options here. And Dan, in our, our, our dining director, he um, will help you with a menu that is sure to please every single appetite um, that's available. So with that being said, I am going to open it up and I want to see what our, uh, our people that are visiting with us today, if they have any questions. So um, feel free to um, type it out. You go to your bottom of your screen where it says chat and then you can type in your question. Whoops. I mean, actually, I think I said that wrong. Um, you go to the question and answer. 
I believe. Let's see. So any questions from our attendees today? Okay, I have a question. How do you know when the time is right to move? <laughs> well, I will tell you this as the marketing person here, a lot of people um, have a challenge with that. They um, sometimes they need a little push to get them going in that direction. But um, I'm going to go to the residents who uh, raise your hand if you um, want to speak to so you know when it's ready. Okay, Maggie. We weren't even looking. And uh, little Miss Lee showed us an apartment and we cleaned out our three-story house that we've been in for 26 years in a very little bit of time and moved here and made it all work. I mean, Lee knows that she knows, she just knows. And if you think, well, I'm moving in two years or I'm moving in five years, a, the prices are going to go up, let's be honest, and B, who knows what apartments will be available and if any apartments will be available. And I think that's something that you have to take into consideration. But yeah, if the right apartment comes up, you have to jump on it. I mean, right away. So that's what I have to say. Thank you, Maggie. Okay, here's a question that came in. What is the average wait list time? And I'm going to jump in on that one because um, I think it's important um, to let people in on our secret because I know some of these panelists have come in this way. Um, you can get on our wait list and I have a packet that I'll be sending to all of you when this is over. And if you could um, fill it in and get the, the in event inquiry form back to me there's a, a $10 gift card um, to either Starbucks or Amazon. So what happens is people get on the wait list and a lot of people, when they do, they, they think I'm going to move in five to 10 years or whatever. And um, there's panelists, I won't say who, but um, have told me, several residents have told me, I'm not ready to move Lee. Um, I just want to start looking and then I come up with their ideal apartment and then all of a sudden voila they're here. So the average wait list time I would say is a couple years and it does depend on what apartment you're looking for. I'll tell you right now the number one apartment is the two bedroom south facing the city and the town. So what you do is you come in and you rent one apartment and wait for your ideal one to come up and most people that can happen two, three, four months down the road, but it's worth the wait because what you get is what you say you want. Does Bayview have hospice care? Um, do any of you residents know about, about the hospice care? Do you want me to answer that? Lee, before you go on to hospice care, I'd like to make a comment about when you come in. And... Um, you know, there's the there's the data set that says you, you you the best time to come in is certainly no later than 78 to 81. And, and there's a reason for that, because you're buying in, you're putting some money, a considerable amount of money down to buying in, and you want to be able to take advantage of that. The second thing is you want to come in when you're doing well. People think that they should come in once they're not doing well. Well, in these continuing care retirement communities, you wanna come in as an independent elder. And if so if you are feeling good and you are active, then that is the time to come in. Don't wait until something happens. And it's really hard to get your head around that, that I, I'm gonna go in even though I'm doing really well. Um, people would ask me, why, why are you going in? You're doing so well. Well, that's the time to go in. <laughs> I kept getting asked, why are you guys going in while you're so young? Mm -hmm. We didn't look at ourselves as being that young. We're in our <laughs> sex, you know, healthy. Um, but I looked us, at him as being old, but that's a whole different <laughs> story. <laughs> I'm older, I'm older, okay? But uh, I just met a number of things for us. Instead of taking care of a house, 
we can do whatever we want to do pretty much every day. And we would shut us down if we wanted to go someplace. We just got up and went. So, um, you know, there's a lot of advantages, and I'm glad Susan brought that up. I do want to say one thing about the hospice care. Hospice is an organization <clears throat> that you can bring in, and we do have people on hospice. And hospice doesn't necessarily mean a couple months. I've seen people be on hospice a year. So um, we do have that opportunity here. My wait list, somebody wants to know how long is the wait list. Right now I have about 61 people on that list. And um, <clears throat> what I wanna say is if you come in and, and you rent an apartment that's not your ideal, um, Susan Chuck mentioned they want their ideal apartment, two bedroom facing south. Um, you will get a full credit for what you paid on that other one. And all residents have first choice on apartments that open up. So you can go, if you come in today on the wait list and you're number 60, you go to the top of that wait list for. Um, yeah, so that you um, you don't have to wait through all those other people. Um, can you give a generalized demographic of your residents, please? Absolutely. So our residents, we have 60% uh, women, 40% men. I would say we have maybe 20 to 25% couples. Is that what you guys think on couples? No. Huh? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. Okay. I thought you said no. Um, yeah. So we have couples um, here, but um, it's interesting when you go down to the dining areas, we have a, a definite men's table and we have definite women's table. <laughs> so um, there's, yeah. So the demographics would be definitely when I got to Bayview, um, the average age was about 83 to 84. And it has dropped way lower. In fact, I have to admit, I am moving people in younger than myself. And um, it's it's really come down. I think we're in the mid-70s now for our average age of the people that are moving in. But any age is good. Any age is good. I think it brings diversity and um, we, are, we are very blessed. Um, we have a resident, actually she just turned 104. And last year she broke the world record of being the oldest person to skydive. And um, she was all over the news and um, it was really amazing and something great to celebrate. Um, what exercise programs do we have? Do any of you want to answer that? Uh, okay, so, <laughs> go for it, Sue. Okay. Uh, well, we have a wonderful director of our fitness center, Naleen, and uh, she has a whole variety of exercise programs, and they're aimed at uh, people no matter what level of ability you have. We will have some that are seated exercise classes. I, I really got to know people here through the exercise classes. So we have seated uh, stretching, we have yoga. Um, I personally love Zumba because I like dancing and music. And we also have the fitness center, which has a whole variety of equipment in it, which was sort of an intimidating to me at first. But with COVID, it actually pushed me into using the equipment because we were not able to have the classes anymore. And so now I've got my routine that I do with the equipment on the treadmill and the stairs, the stepper. And then there's also the pool. We had classes in the pool and... Um, which I didn't have a chance to take advantage of before the COVID hit. But now uh, on occasion when we've been able to open the pool, we have individualized time that you can go in there and you can just swim or mess around. It's only one person at a time or a couple at a time. We also have a one, uh, three people in the, in the gym when it's open. And so uh, we still get a chance to do our exercises. And as things have closed down, 
and channel 69, our internal TV channel has come up. Uh, Nalene has found us some really wonderful senior mm -hmm. fitness um, exercise programs. So now every day at 10 and at two, I do exercises. There's others, but those are the ones that I like because we've got some with music and we've got some with weights and they really do make a huge difference in your, uh, the way you feel. You don't feel achy, you don't feel <laughs> stiff anymore. It's amazing. I really didn't realize how, what a huge difference exercise made because I didn't tend to be a gym person before I came here. So it's been introduced to me here at Bayview and I'm telling you, it is wonderful. Not only okay. social, but physical. Good. All right. Um, I have another person. She or they are asking, do you have any writing classes or groups, any Scrabble, uh, my favorite game, or Trivial Pursuit programs? Who would like to take that? Susan, haven't you um, participated in a, in a writing class? Did any of you? I haven't participated in the writing class, but there is a writing class here. That's what and, I thought. Um, you know, and the drawing class and um, all of the other classes that you, you we used to have. Unfortunately, they are closed down right now, but I know that when this is over, they will start up again. Absolutely. The, the thing about Bayview is if you have some an interest and you don't see it being offered here, all you have to do is ask. And they will bend over backwards to get you what you need. I mean, they didn't have a water class when I first came in. And I said, well, I, I, I can give a watercolor class. <laughs> and within a week, I was, you know, we had our um, supplies brought in and paid for and um, all the support I needed to start an, a beginning watercolor class was given. So if you, there's something you're interested in and it's not being offered right now or just go Good to point. Heather, our activities director, and she will bend over backwards to make it happen. Awesome. Jenny, I've, what are you gonna I've, say? I've, been, I've been a beneficiary of Susan's watercolor class and not only, <laughs> and, and not going in considering that I had any, any idea what what I was doing. I've, I've really enjoyed it and just, just playing around. And Susan is a wonderful teacher because she makes you feel good about whatever you've done. And I look back at some of the things she complimented me on several months ago and kind of go, eh. <laughs> so, <laughs> other, uh, you mentioned Trivial Pursuit and so forth. And it reminded me that there are a lot of people here who love doing jigsaw puzzles. And on the top floor, there is a I... huge, um, a library of, of jigsaw puzzles and the floors are configured in such a way that there's a central uh, table for most of them. Before the um, virus hit, people were gathering around these tables and working together as a, as a, a group to finish jigsaw puzzles. And I know there are people that put them in their room as well, but uh, I think, and there, I know they're bridge groups and I don't know about trivial. There, there is a travel group as well. Is it's there? I believe every week, yes. Okay. Right, another question that I have that someone's asking, has anyone chosen to leave Bayview during COVID either permanently or temporarily? Um, I don't I think can, anybody. I, I left for four days um, to be with my son's family. Uh -huh. um, up on Whitby Island, and I hadn't seen my grandchildren, and I hadn't seen my son, and so I got permission, and um, there was a process I had to go through coming back. I had to get a COVID test, and then I had to uh, quarantine in my apartment, but Jamie, our social worker, was wonderful, and um, she made it happen, and it was easy and clear, um, but, and that was just four days. Yeah, I don't think anybody's left permanently because of COVID. Um, we've had a couple cases and um, one of them was uh, one of our workers who worked completely isol in isolation. And um, as soon as they found out um, they t tested positive, uh, they were gone out of the building and there was no uh, repercussions from that. And then we had somebody, I believe, in our health center, but um, they were diagnosed not here 
um, before they came into work. So, um, and then they quarantined and, and got better. So we haven't had any uh, major outbreaks. We're very fortunate and blessed that um, some of the other communities haven't had such uh, good luck with that. So um, we were very proactive back it's it seems almost like ages ago when this first came to be and and uh we got the masks going we got the testing temperatures and profiling and and um the residents i will tell you these panel members that you're hearing from all cooperated hands down 100 percent to um, not only keep themselves safe, but their um, residents and friends here in the building. So it's been something that each one of them can feel very good about cooperating. It, we haven't had any resistance and, and I know it's a, a, a challenge. So I feel really confident about how they have maintained during this epidemic. Uh, I, I would note, Lee, Lee I, I, I would note that the, the process has been very transparent here. When mm -hmm. those two cases arose, we knew about them the same mm -hmm. day or the very next day. And we never encountered the situation you read in the paper where something happens and nobody hears about it until a week later. We knew yeah. right away what was going on and how it was being developed and what was happening and when it uh, was, was dismissed. Thank you. That's good feedback. Um, I have also, uh, so Lee, uh, many times when I've just had con casual conversation with people, it's mentioned how glad we are to be here in the time, of, specifically in this place in the time of the pandemic. This is a good yes. place to be, and everybody feels that way. And and you guys have all witnessed me bringing in. I've brought in. Uh, we've got a lot of people that moved during this uh, epidemic, and um, it's it's um, been wonderful for them to take that risk. And and when they do show up on our door, they have to quarantine for fourteen days, and then they can't wait. Some of them actually relish those fourteen days getting their apartments organized. So um, it's it's worked well for some of them. I have somebody that wants to know what are the particulars of getting on your wait list? Well, um, it's quite simple. It's $1,000 a person or 2000 for a couple. It's 85% refundable should you choose to go to another community. And um, that money rolls over to your application fee when you apply to come in to Bayview. And um, I am going to send out i have emails there's a lot of you that are brand new to bayview all i know is your name and your email but i will get these packets emailed to everybody after this um seminar and um you will have an opportunity there is a waitlist form in there so all you got to do is fill that out and get it in the mail to me and i will put you on the list um somebody wants to know do you have professional chefs yes we do <laughs> yes we do <laughs> <laughs> and everybody loves the food right <laughs> uh, chefs who've worked at places like anthony's uh, and other places you've heard of they know yeah. how to cook fish <clears throat> they really know how to cook yeah, fish fish is good <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd like to say something else too about the transparency that Chuck touched on. Sure. It's not just the COVID transparency. Um, I have been so impressed that Bayview is totally transparent about any kind of issue, whether it's the elevators not working or difficulties with the TVs or um, anything uh, that maybe needs repair they give us constant updates about the progress and and any issues that may or problems that may arise and how their their efforts to fix it and so i think that transparency is just amazing okay i've got one more question i'm gonna answer and that is let's see i'm gonna 
it says you need a car and do we have parking? We do have parking. Um, it's $200 a month for parking and it's in a beautiful, well lit, safe garage. You pull in, the gate comes up. <clears throat> and then when you're leaving, same thing, you pull up and the gate will open and you'll be able to exit. And um, you don't need a car, honestly. Um, a lot of people, once they move in, they find right away that they want to um, get rid of their car because it's just sitting right outside the door. You have the buses that the residents use. We have our own Bayview vans that take you to all doctors and dentist appointments and um, other excursions when the COVID's gone. And um, so... Um, there's things that are very close by too that you can walk to. Um, the last thing I'm going to say, this person um, just says, what are the financial qualifications for moving into Bayview? We have um, a class that I'm going to give you a, a little advertisement and, and that is on January 6th. Uh, Joyce Doucette, who is our CFO, her and I are going to co-host uh, Contracts and Financials at Bayview. And I highly recommend um, you to sign up for that class. It's a webinar. It's already posted. You can um, sign, start signing up now. But we have a program here at Bayview called Moderate Income that um, you can actually come in without a uh, admission fee and your monthly fee can go on a sliding scale and this gives an opportunity to people that um, financially normally couldn't afford to live here and we love again going back to diversity we want to make dreams come true uh, for people as well um, for financial so um, if you know anybody or you want to personally talk to me about that, I'm more than happy to um, meet with you or sp speak to you on the phone about that because um, most people, they're surprised. Um, they think because of our gorgeous location and all the amenities here. Um, that, Sorry about that. That... Um, yeah, that they might not qualify. So don't um, think that about yourself or a friend that you would want to recommend. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. I, first of all, want to thank my fabulous panelists. Yay. Give them a yeah. clap your hands for them. They did an amazing job. And I really want to thank all of you participants that stayed with us through this whole webinar today. It's our joy to bring information from our place to you. And if it is something that is interesting to you, please don't hesitate. I am touring people. And um, because it's necessary to keep our um, community alive and well. So if, if you want a tour, if you want to chat with me, um, you may get a hold of me. And thank you again for being here and um, have a happy holiday season.